good morning. Uh, as planned, today the lecture is not given by myself. Dr. Giorgio Lombardi will give the lecture for my side. Uh, the lecture will uh, deal uh, will regard the gallium nitride power devices. Uh, I hope you enjoy and I leave the stage to Dr. Giorgio Lombardi. Good morning, everyone. Uh, just a um, couple of minutes to introduce myself, I guess. I did my undergraduate in Naples, so in this university, and then I moved to Cambridge for my uh, master thesis um, within an Erasmus project, and I continued with a PhD. Now I'm postdoc researcher in Cambridge since one year and a half ago. So it's um, nice to be here to share my knowledge with you. I hope you will enjoy the lecture. My research is in gallium nitride devices for power electronics. So this is going to be the main topic of the, of the lecture. And I belong to the uh, group of uh, high, it's called High Voltage Microelectronics and Sensors Group within the University of Cambridge. So we do both power devices and sensors but my field of expertise is power devices. Um, brief outline of what we will uh, um, uh, talk about today. So I will first introduce the wide band gum materials and the reason why we're interested in these new materials for uh, power applications. In particular, I will focus very briefly because I know that Professor Napoli has touched that, um, has talked about that already. So I will talk very briefly about on resistance breakdown trade-off. And uh, then I will spend a bit of time, um, fortunately I have to go through the physics of gallium nitride because it's slightly different from what the one of the silicon. So without having the basis of the gallium nitride physics, it's difficult to understand how the devices operate. So we'll spend uh, at least 20 minutes on that. Uh, going through also the physics of the heterojunction, you might already know something about heterojunction devices. Uh, if you did, I don't know if it's still on the course with uh, Professor Rinaldi. Uh, Microelectronics. So we... Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, and then we go through the physics of uh, group 3 nitride, as I was mentioning, and then uh, finally we focus on uh, gallium nitride based uh, devices, in particular the hand, and uh, look at the cross section, operation mode, and the breakdown um, mechanism. And then we will conclude with uh, issues related to gallium nitride. And you will see what I mean by issues, uh, in particular current collapse. I will explain to you what it is. And uh, normally off uh, structures. You will understand uh, again in few slides what I mean uh, with that. Uh, the last slide is just to introduce you to what's the um, uh, how many devices are actually available, just to give you an idea of how much is still research and how much is actually uh, commercialized. So, uh, very briefly, as I was mentioning, you know that there is a limit um, which describes the trade-offs in silicon in terms of on-state resistance and breakdown. Uh, this limit is given by this equation, which I'm sure has been derived in the, in the previous lectures. So all it says is that you have uh, in a logarithm scale a linear uh, dependent of the uh, on-state resistance with the with the breakdown, uh, and in particular um, this is the by substituting all the terms in the question you have uh, these uh, numbers as a pre-factor and breakdown to the power of 2.5. Uh, I'm not really interested in explaining this equation. What I want to uh, uh, mention is that the denominator of this relation is the so-called uh, Baliga figure of merit, which is quite popular to describing the, uh, let's say, the, as I was mentioning, the limits of the, of the material and the device itself. This equation is very nice for silicon and for basic devices. Unfortunately, it doesn't describe very well the limits for uh, other technologies such as superjunction and uh, IGBTs as well, and uh, also um, large structures. Uh, so as I highlighted here, um, this figure of merit is not only dependent on the material, but on the device concept and technology. So if you include on the same plot, the, you leave the silicon limit, which is the blue one, and you include the uh, limits for silicon sub superjunction for different cell pitch dimensions. You have five and one micron here, but the dimension I'm mentioning is uh, this one. You have another relationship which uh, depends on, the, on this uh, geometrical dimension of the, of the cell pitch. 
and uh, you can see it overcome the uh, limit of the of the silicon. Uh, this, of course, is limited by the technology and how uh, narrow these uh, change uh, these uh, pitches can be, which is currently one micrometers, the limit. Now, if we want to put on the same plot again, we want to add other information and we want to start introducing the white band gap material, we have to consider the silicon carbide and the gallium nitride as uh, uh, materials to uh, compare the silicon with for a power application. Technically, there is also diamond, but there are no devices available in diamond, so I did not uh, include that in the, in the picture. So you can see, um, I have the question here, we can understand it after we uh, talk about the period the properties of the material, but as you can see from the question, in, if you consider that at the denominator there is the electromobility, the sheet electron density in the channel and the critical electric field, by considering that this value, the value of the mobility is much higher than in silicon, it reaches values of 2000 centimeters per, per volt per second, and the, sheet, um, the electron density in the channel is uh, as well much higher than in silicon without including any uh, any doping in the structure, you will see also the critical electric field is quite high, then you obtain that at least theoretically the gallium nitride is much better than silicon if you compare it in terms of on-site resistance and breakdown. We'll, we'll come back to this slide after we describe the properties of GAN because I think um, it, it, it's best to understand the question. So uh, let's focus on the on the properties. In uh, this table, we have a comparison of the properties of gallium nitride, the ones of silicon, of course, because it's the main material used uh, in all kinds of applications, and with the ones of silicon carbide, which is uh, another uh, competitor for gallium nitride for high voltage applications, and the ones of diamond, which again is uh, has been considered in research, but it's still far away to be uh, commercialized. Uh, what you can see, what I would like to focus the attention on, is on uh, the values of the band gap. So it's a wet band gap material, as well as silicon carbide and diamond. Uh, because it's a wet band gap material, it has a very low intrinsic concentration. Look at the numbers, it's actually 20 order of magnitude lower than the one of silicon. And uh, the breakdown field is uh, much higher, it's one order of magnitude higher than the one of silicon. And the mobility, it's, uh, as I was mentioning to you, it's quite high, electromobility. There are in literature values um, of electromobility in the channel of the device uh, up to 2,000 centimeters square per volt per second, as I was mentioning before. The value of the mobility, it, it really depends on the structure of the device. You will understand why in two slides as well. It's anyway higher than one in silicon and not comparable at all with one of silicon carbide that in some cases reaches values, uh, I've seen some values of 20 uh, centimeters square per volt per second, which is uh, quite um, low. Uh, the properties of diamond, again, are uh, very promising, but uh, there are other difficulties, which if we have time, I will discuss about at the end of the lecture. So just to give you uh, the whole picture of why are we looking at, uh, why we are looking at gallium nitride, uh, there are three, um, between two and three uh, reasons between, uh, why we are actually focused and interested in, in uh, understanding the properties of uh, gun-based devices um, and why we want to use it for power application. The first one is material properties, which we just discussed. Uh, it has a wide band cap. Wide band cap means higher, high critical electric field and low intrinsic concentration. High critical electric field means that for the same breakdown voltage, you can have a much shorter uh, drift uh, length, and therefore, therefore your device is, is much smaller, and the area occupied is much smaller. Low intrinsic current concentration means uh, lower leakage current if compared to silicon uh, based devices. Another uh, material property which I didn't mention so far, but I will uh, to describe the physics of GAN, is the piezo polarization nature. Uh, because of that, we have a very high concentration in the channel without need to dop, to actually put n-type doping in the structure. And if you don't put n-type doping in the structure, then it means that the scattering with the dopants is not existent, and then your mobility can go even higher. So uh, that's a property we will understand again in two slides. Um, and then we have to look at the technology properties. By technology, I mean uh, the devices we are actually making in GAN 
because we don't work with a piece of gun as it is, doping it uh, as we would do with silicone. We actually had to create an heterojunction, an heterojunction based device which gives the possibility to confine electrons in a channel and let them uh, not interact with doping, as I was mentioning, and uh, have a very high electron mobility um, uh, in, in the channel. So the high electron mobility, why do we have interested into that? For several reasons. One is the, the fact that the, the main one is the lower onset resistance that derives from that. And the fact that there is a low onset resistance gives you a lower conduction losses and uh, uh, therefore higher converter efficiency. So, gallium nitride is really a solution for uh, high, uh, um, high efficiency devices and converters. Uh, the second reason why we uh, like the, uh, the algae and gun is the structure, so the, the hand device, is because of the past switching. Um, what we have in gallium nitride is the possibility to, to switch very fast the device, which is not something that happens in devices in silicon such as IGBTs or also the, uh, the MOSFET, which requires, it has a ton of time uh, related to the um, uh, to the uh, uh, depletion of the of the, the drip region, to the removal of the carriers from there. So, um, why do we like the device to operate um, fast? Because we can shrink the dimensions of the circuits using uh, passive components which are much smaller, um, and for again cost reduction. Uh, the, uh, another reason we had to consider is that gallium nitride, as, uh, um, and this is one of the main differences between silicon carbide and gallium nitride, gallium nitride can be grown on silicon, which means we can use all the know-how we have in silicon and we can use the facilities to grow uh, silicon and uh, the cost associated to the process is much lower than silicon if you go for a silicon carbide based uh, process. Uh, so, the advantages of GAN are three uh, main advantages. This is what we don't have to forget. We are not comparing gallium nitride, as I was mentioning, as a piece of material compared to silicon. We are comparing a material with promising uh, properties, physical properties, such as wide band gap, uh, low intrinsic concentration, and ones we've seen. And we are comparing at the same time the device technology, the heterostructure, so all the benefits that that device gives us. And we are comparing gallium nitride in the circuit itself because we are using these devices in a circuit. We are not just use, taking the device as it is. We want to use it in a converter or uh, depending on the application, we, we, we need to uh, build a circuit around it. And if you consider that it can go much faster and the passive components can be shrinked, the dimension can be shrinked and the cost reduced uh, because of that, then you see the advantage of, uh, of gun. So by summing up these three reasons, gallium nitride is actually a very promising material. And this is why uh, at the moment there is a lot of effort in trying to crack the problems related to these devices. Another point I just want to make before going into the physics is that uh, gallium nitride does not, the aim of these devices is not to replace silicon. You won't see gallium nitride in all kinds of applications, but it's just for specific applications in the range of 600 volts, 1.2 uh, kV. Uh, here you have the applications we, um, for power devices in general, and it's highlighted um, in, uh, in red the part of the, of, the, uh, of the chart in which the gallium nitride sits. You see it's for high frequencies, as I was men mentioning, and for a relatively low voltage uh, uh, amp capacity. Um, so it doesn't uh, aim to be used in the uh, voltage amps um, range of the IGBT or not even uh, to, to mention for the uh, GTO. Uh, it really, the main competitor is, I would say, the, the, the MOSFET, the silicon MOSFET. Uh, here you have uh, um, some of the applications in which gallium nitride based devices can be used uh, in. Uh, we have a low voltage DC DC convertent, which are points of loads, power factor corrections uh, circuits, and in the inverters of photovoltaic uh, panels as well as electric vehicles.